it's time for some exclusive gameplay of Battlefield Hardline. You're currently feasting your eyes on some brand new multiplayer footage of the map Bank Job. And this is one of the three maps that will be included in the beta that's dropping for you guys tomorrow. And we're playing the brand new heist game mode as well. So straight off the bat, my opinion, this map and mode combo is one of the best in Battlefield Hardline. And I have a few reasons to back that up. So first of all, we have the cops versus criminal setting, which is what makes Hardline what it is. It makes total sense that Bank Job actually became a thing in Hardline, and you can't get a setting that's more relevant than a bank heist with a cops and criminal setting. Secondly, Heist is a fast-paced game mode, and if you put that ideology into a close quarters environment, then you've got yourself a pretty intense battleground. You've got doorways and vault switches that can be open and closed, and if you couple that with a large area with destructible chandeliers, things can get pretty hectic once the first bomb's been armed in this game mode. And thirdly, getting in and out. Heist requires you to get into the danger zone, in this case the bank vault, blow it open, collect the cash, and get yourself to the extraction point. That system is perfect for bank job because that's exactly what you would do in a real bank heist. So now you've had a good look at what's going on in the background, I want to talk about something a little bit different. Now this applies to a lot of different maps within Hardline, but I feel that most of these tips work well in the close quarter environments like Bank Job or The Block. Those are probably my two favourite maps in Hardline at the moment. So if you want to make sure that you're getting the best out of this map and game mode, listen closely. First of all, keeping yourself alive. Cast your minds back to Battlefield 4 for just a second. How many times were you playing a support or an engineer, you're running low on health, and the medic next to you won't bloody drop his medic kit? Well, the developers over at Visceral have got a solution to that, and they're offering you a few more ways to keep your health up. First of all, you no longer have to wait for that medic to drop his medic pack. You can run up to the Medic, or as it's now known, the Operator class within Battlefield Hardline, and you can take health from them. And it's fairly simple to do so. All you have to do is run up behind them, from the side of them, from the front of them, and push the Interact button. Now on a PC, that's the E button on the keyboard, but it's going to vary if you're on a console. But if you push that, it will pop up with a notification asking you if you want to take ammo. If you hit the Interact button, you will start to replenish your health. It works the same way as the small med packs worked in Battlefield 4. You'll receive 10 health points per second until you reach 100% again. Alongside that function, you'll see something fairly similar but quite different at the same time that will help you around the map too. You will find a couple of locations on each map where health packs are stuck on the wall, so they're separate from a player. They're essentially a global health pack, if you will. It works exactly the same, however, if you run up to it, hit the interact button, and you'll start to receive health in 10 point chunks. Use that until you reach 100% again, you can go back around the corner and get yourself back into the fight. Oh, and one final thing for the health. The devs have chucked in some defibs on the wall for you to use as well. You can run up to those, hit interact, and it doesn't matter what class you are, it will replace your primary weapon with the defibrillators. But you have to bear in mind, once you pick them up, they are your primary weapon, so if you want to switch back, it will take you a couple of seconds to do so. Although it can help out in a cool situation where you're the only one left, if you're standing next to the defibs and you've got a chance to revive somebody, you may as well do it. Next up is ammunition, and this is really an extension of the health system that I was just talking about, because a very similar system applies. You can now run up to the support player, or the enforcer, as it's called in Battlefield Hardline, and you can take ammunition right off them. Or, you can find the ammo locker that's placed around the map as well, and you can fuel up from there too. Now, unfortunately, I only had the chance to test this with primary and secondary ammo. I was still getting used to the map at this point, and there were lots of people playing, and I didn't want to die all the time. So, I only had the chance to test it with that primary and secondary ammo. I can't confirm if it will work for any of your gadgets and grenades, for example. All of these new changes are fantastic for keeping the gameplay flowing. Of course, you'd want your fellow teammates to be dropping health and ammo all the time, but if they don't, and there are occasions like that that you really wish you had some, there are now legitimate alternatives for you to get what you need on the battlefield. It might seem only like a few small changes, but they'd make a massive change to the gameplay. 
Okay, so now you know how to stay alive in this game mode. How about using that life <laughs> to a good advantage and actually helping your team to win the round? Well, let's stick with the focus on this map and let's have a look at what we can do. I mentioned doorways earlier. You can open and close them as you'd expect. You can do that in Battlefield 4 already. But there's something a little bit more here. Obviously closing them after you've gone through will slow down enemies and opening them up will create new routes. And this can be confusing for you and the enemy, but it changes the gameplay every single time you enter those areas. But you can now remove those doors completely, which changes the gameplay even more. If you've got one of those heavy melee weapons like a sledgehammer or a fire axe, then you can smash the door off its hinges. This changes tactics completely because you no longer have to rely on that door to open and close or slow down an enemy or change their direction. You've got to be looking around all the time. But also, it can create an advantage for you, because if you smash through the right doors and you're on a good streak, you go in and get the objective, then you can get yourself out very quickly if you've smashed all the doors off its hinges. Do you know what, there's so many more things that I could go into detail on, but these are some of the main things that I utilise during the play sessions at Visceral's office in San Francisco. I kinda hope these tips and tricks will help you guys tomorrow when the beta finally drops, I'm just excited as you are by the way, and that you can get a taste of all the changes and improvements that developers have made since the last time you played this game, which was all the way back in the middle of 2014, nearly 8 months ago now. Anyway, thank you very much for watching, if you liked the video, you could drop me a rating and a comment, it's always appreciated. But until next time, my name is Westy. And I'll catch you guys in the next video.